Captain Insano comes out to play. Yosh! Yosh! What's up, Joe Crew? It's me, Joku. I'm going to show you guys a little playthrough of Soul Striker today. I got this fancy metal leader from TCG Metals. It's beautiful. If you don't have one, get yourself one. Link in the description below with a pro, uh, promo code. So basically today, I'm just gonna go through my Soul Striker deck list and show you how I like to play it. Um, I'm simulating gameplay, so this is not a real game. This is just showing you how I draw cards, what I look for, how I'm playing stuff, and I'll talk about kind of my ideas of how I'm playing and what I'm playing while I'm doing it. So. Let's get into it. This is a playmat from Your Playmat. You can get it at yourplaymat.com. There's a link in the description below for that as well. And these sleeves are available there also. Uh, these stickers on this deck box, well, this is mine. This is uh, Super Rose and Choto Minute. They're on Instagram. Uh, I'll probably put their links in the description also. Always keep a regular leader, even though you're using your fancy awesome leader. So I'll just keep that over there and have my TCG Metals leader there. So um, Giancarlo at Nats showed me this cool way to shuffle. I never shuffled like this before, but it seemed to work pretty well for me. So just make five stacks. Here, stack, 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 stack. Line them all up like this, and then you just shuffle them into each other. And it's worked pretty well to randomize stuff for me. I'm not gonna do an ideal hand. I'm just gonna draw and mulligan just normally to show you kind of what I'm looking for. Talk about the things you wanna keep and then talk about lines of play. As you see what's in your hand, because your hand kind of determines where you go and what you do from there. There. So I take those two stacks, boom, 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 shuffle them up. And I made a few small changes to the deck, nothing major. I took out that Go Tanks Reaper and I put in some Calamity Challengers. I also took out the Double Strike Champa. Um, I think it's kind of a crutch and I don't like it as much as I used to. Uh, so you wanna grab six cards there. Look at your opening hand. Uh, unison is always something you wanna keep. So if you have a unison, you're for sure gonna keep that. And then we want to keep a blue yellow, but there's no blue yellow here. So we're just going to send everything back for blue yellow because turn one, ideally you want to charge a blue yellow if possible. So shuffle that up. Hope we get a blue yellow here. Give it a little shuffle and a cut. And we'll grab five cards off the top. There's our six, opening six, and then we'll set our life. So grab eight cards for life. I like to set my life like this. It seems to work well for me. And check out our opening hand, and yeah, we got some blue yellow, so we're in business. And we got Captain Insano, so that's awesome. All right, uh, I'm gonna roll some dice here, I always roll for my opponent first. So my opponent rolled a seven and I am gonna roll a 10, which means I'm going first, which is great. So turn one, I wanna charge a multicolor. Keflas, I think you wanna just keep as many in your hand as possible. It's also nice if your opponent doesn't know you're playing it, they should assume that you are, but to not show that right away. So I'm also running three of now, so I will put that in my energy and rest mode and pass turn. My opponent realistically is gonna be swinging with their leader to draw cards, so to simulate the gameplay, I'm just gonna take a life. I imagine they'll probably hit me once. Depending on the deck, they may hit me twice, but I think one is pretty average. So my turn starts, draw for turn. That's a wonderful draw. And then choose something and put it in my energy. Um, I'm probably going to play the Gogeta Unison. I like him better than Baby. Um, and I have two Babies and three Gogetas, so I'm gonna charge this Baby Unison. And I will attack probably their leader, or if they have some battle card I wanna get rid of, I'd attack that. Uh, auto, draw, you almost never untap with Soul Strike, you're pretty much always just drawing. Um, and then probably not do anything else. Um, if I had an ape in my hand turn one when they attacked me, I would have comboed the ape off and then used my energy to draw off the ape, but I didn't have that, so I didn't do it. Um, then I would pass turn. I would say this turn, they're either gonna hit me once or twice. For the argument's sake, I'll say they hit me twice. They probably won't want to hit me to four because or to four because that's going to force me to have the unison. But if they were smart, they would have seen the unison in my energy area. And I obviously wouldn't charge one if I didn't have one. Um, but it does force me to have it. So for my turn, I'll draw, choose something in my hand, uh, put in my energy area. Something I also learned that's really helpful is sorting your hand. So 
uh, if you keep all the things in your hand in order like this, it kind of helps to see where they are. Um, this is a good charge because you're usually going to use it late game. And with Zeno, you can usually pull it out of your energy. So, and I like looking at it the whole game. So I like to put that in my energy right there. First thing you're going to do since it is our turn three is play unison since we have one. So Captain Insano comes out to play and we pay three for him. So he's going to come out with three markers. Since we have a unison specify cost of three, that allows us to awaken. So I'm going to awaken, draw two. Great cards to draw. Actually, uh, I added him. I only have three. I want to play four of him, but I only have three foils. So I added him. He kind of works as the fourth, and he's also a negate. Um, this is a, for you, those of you that don't know, this is a counter attack. And if your leader's mono blue, you can negate the attack. Then choose a unison card in your drop area and add it to your hand. Um, so you get to negate and add a unison, and then he's a body that plays. So now that we have our unison out, pretty much always in Soul Striker, you want to swing with your leader first if your energy is tapped. So you can maximize getting your energy back in case your opponent plays a floodgate or something like that. So we want to play around that. Um, so first thing we do is swing with lead and when we swing with our leader, um, we're going to untap two, we're going to draw a card first. Great. And then untap to mono blue energy. So we're at two energy untapped and this is going to go against our opponent. They're either going to have to defend or take the hit. Um, at this point, I like to play Calamity Challenger. Calamity Challenger is one energy. If I have it, I'm going to play it. And with uh, Soul Striker, you always want to tap energy that you want to get back into your hand. In the event on my next turn that my opponent attacks me and I want to get energy back up, I can Zeno Super Combo and grab my UI Kamehameha out of my um, energy area. So when... Uh, Calamity Challenger gets played. He's one energy and he draws a card. It's an amazing card. Wow, this is kind of value here. So at this point, now I would swing with Calamity Challenger first, depending on what color I'm playing. If I'm playing against yellow, I'm gonna swing with Gogeta Super Warrior first because uh, if I'm playing against yellow, they're gonna have Power of the Super Saiyan. You have to play around Power of the Super Saiyan. So you would swing with this first, but if they had Power of the Super Saiyan, they would have activated it on the leader swing. So he would be tapped anyway. Uh, but they may have drawn into it off their life. So it's still smart to swing here if you're playing yellow or if you're playing any other color, you basically just swing here. So I would swing here. And the reason why you wanna swing here is because he's smaller than him. He's 15K, he's 20K. So if you swing with a 15K before a 20K, they have less cards in their hand to combo out and that may force a card out of their hand. They also know there's gonna be two 20K attacks coming. The other thing that's nice about Calamity Challenger is he's a blue sand, um, which procs Gogeta's permanent ability. So I would swing here, they would either take it or defend it, and then you get two attacks here. Uh, after you get two attacks, depending on what their board looks like, if they have cards you wanna get rid of, you can minus one on Gogeta, bounce their board. Um, if they're silly enough to play like Kai or something, you can minus one on Gogeta, get rid of their Kai, and then they can't play their Kai. Uh, I just drew into this off of Goku, and I have a Zeno in hand, so I don't really care about tapping out, especially because I have Hatch. It just like doesn't really matter right now. So after applying all that pressure, I would probably pay one energy um, Spirit Boost off of Gogeta minus one play Tapion. When Tapion comes in, he draws a card and now I have a 20K double strike to pressure them with. And by this point, I mean, they're gonna have to have defended something because this is one, two, three, four, five, six uh, damage that they're gonna have to deal with on turn three, which is pretty strong. So turn their turn now, they're gonna swing at my leader and I'm gonna not take any damage because I have a sand and rest, but no, it's just a bit bad. But if they're not bad, they're gonna kill the unison. They wanna kill the unison or they wanna kill Goku because once they kill Goku, then my leader can take damage. Um, most people don't want the unison at two because God ceiling is online. So they're probably gonna hit my unison to one. Then they might kill Goku and then maybe they'll swing at my leader. When they swing at my leader, this seems like a good time to, ah, you know, I would take it just to go to four in case I get a uh, Vegeta super combo. Um, and then they might say they kill my unison or something like that. So unison's dead. All right, so for my turn, I'm gonna draw a card and untap my energy. I'll choose something to play in my energy. I have two God ceilings and no, uh, I have two God ceilings and no unisons. So I'm probably just gonna charge a God ceiling here. Uh, at which point I want to use energy 
in order to untap with my leader. Now, depending on what color I'm playing, I may just have to swing with my leader or I may have to figure out a way to draw cards. Uh, when you're in a pinch like this, a way you can do that is actually to just play Zeno. Zeno will draw you a card, but you're running the risk of losing that untapped defensively if they have a way of dealing with Zeno or getting rid of him, which he's not that hard to get rid of. But depending on what color you're playing against, he might be a perfectly fine play. If they don't have a way to tap my leader, the thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to swing with Tapion. And when I swing with Tapion, they're gonna either negate or not negate. I am going to combo to 25 at this point. When I combo to 25, they're gonna have to deal with that. Um, and then this will go to the drop. That gives me two energy to play with here. So I'll pay two energy, uh, draw two cards, and then I'm good to swing with my leader. So when I swing with my leader here, uh, I'm gonna draw a card untap two energy and here we go captain insano is back to play so at this point i think i'm not going to uh rush for the uh Kefl play i think Kefla is better to play on defense so i would probably just play another gogeta unison here um play him comes out with three markers maybe they have some annoying stuff on their board i'm going to minus one bounce their board uh swing twice with him at which point I would pass turn. And when I pass, uh, they're gonna go. So the first thing that's gonna happen is they'll probably try and get Gogeta to one. So when they try and get Gogeta to one, that's a good instance to use Dimension Magic. So you can Dimension Magic here, get the energy that you don't want back there. <laughs> And then uh, at that point, maybe they're gonna try and play a battle card. When they try and play a battle card, I'll God Sealing the battle card. Um, then they may try to do another swing. Say, just for art, if, I mean, they should be trying to kill my unison, but in the event that they were trying to kill this or something, or swing at my leader, uh, maybe they just had to pressure at this point. This is the opportunity where you wanna Xeno super combo, grab this UI, put something back in your energy. At this point, we've done a lot of damage. Um, also probably not gonna need to grab my other Gogeta from my drop, so I'd probably just charge him, uh, drop this other ape in the combo area to combo out, and then pay three energy to play Kefla and bottom deck whatever threat is on their board she's going to bottom deck something ignoring barrier they may have a way of dealing with her but for learning purposes let's say that they don't and uh maybe they swing with something and i block with kefla and then they swing with another thing and manage to deal a life so we'll go to three um and then for my turn i'm going to draw a card everything's going to untap here um, depending on what their board state is like, that's really going to determine, you know, how you choose to interact with them. Um, obviously you want to charge something here. So I don't think we're going to go to turn set. I don't know. I've dealt a lot of damage. So in this instance, let's say we're not going to go to turn seven. I'm going to just charge, uh, turning the tides. First thing I would just pay two energy right off the bat for sand instincts and draw two cards, which is really good. Um, this girl is amazing. If I'm playing against a deck with floodgates, I would straight up just play two of her because she's going to draw on each play. I'll play another one, draw on another play. Um, and then depending on what their energy is like, if I think I can go for game here, if they're playing multicolor, I would discard Kefla, tap their multicolor energy, or if they have like Mechikabura on board, I would tap their Mechikabura. I get to draw two cards and now she has dual attack. Um, so at this point, I would probably swing with my leader before anything. I want to get my energy back. It's actually more important than her swings at this point. So I would swing with my leader, draw two, draw one, untap two energy. Um, and now at this point, if they negate with a floodgate, they're going to have to bottom deck too. And I'm, I'm fine with that exchange, especially because I have another Kefla in hand. I know I can deal with playing her next turn. And right now I have six in my drop area. So if they're gonna do anything and play bodies on board, I can just get rid of them with secret identity. Um, so I have a lot of options here. 
Uh, but for the sake of going through this, I'm just gonna play through, say they are able to negate both of these swings. They're able to negate both of Kefla's swings. I still have Tapion's double strike. So that's two, four, six, seven attacks on this turn. Um, but for the sake of argument, let's say they were able to somehow deal with all of that. So on the next turn, I wanna be at five energy um, to hatch safely. So for the next turn, they're gonna come in at me. Let's say they swing with something. At this point, I wanna dimension magic um, from my life. And that's gonna allow me to untap two energy. Um, once I have two energy untapped, the next swing that they make, I would definitely play baby hatch. And if they have a counter counter for my baby hatch, then I have the five energy to baby golden avenger. And say they're playing blue and they have uh, uh, something that comes into play to deal with that, I would just God sealing that because my unison's still at two. So that gives me the play. Um, they can't attack anymore for the turn. Um, so I would go into my next turn and this turn, I'm probably gonna try and kill them since I have a board to deal with everything and all the resources I need at this point. Um, so the first thing I would do here to set up my kill turn, I don't have any apes in my drop area. I don't have any apes in my hand. I probably want to swing with my leader uh, at some point, but I'm gonna probably go for Kefla's effect first. So if they have an energy left open, if there's a multicolor energy left open, I'm gonna discard Kefla, draw two cards. Based on how my last turn went, I doubt they're gonna have any more stuff to deal with what I have, and that's great, we just drew into Foo. So now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards in the drop uh at this point it really uh is probably smart to play foo if they don't have answers for it so if i'm able to swing with something say i swing with kefla first attack and they negate with a repost or something like that if they negate with the repost then i would zamasu the eliminator the repost to uh, send it back to hand. And uh, actually I, I wouldn't do that because they're gonna have to bottom deck too anyway and I'm fine with that exchange. So if they play any body, they'll have to bottom deck off of the East Kai's because she's just too good. But if they don't negate, uh, say we're here, I would maybe combo off, uh, combo off a East Kai here just to go to 10. And if it's safe to play Foo, then I'll play Foo. But let's say it's not safe to play Foo, so I wouldn't combo this off. I would attack again, um, and then I would swing with Tapion, swing with Hatch, and swing with Baby Golden Avenger. Now, obviously, they're gonna have negates, they're gonna have ways to tap cards. It really depends on what their board state is like, what their energy is like, what all those things are doing in order to determine how and what you wanna play. Um, I think a good play here would be after you, you know, attack twice with Gogeta, you can play Calamity Challenger for one, draw, there's another Kefla, amazing, this deck loves me sometimes. Uh, you can swing with Calamity Challenger, and then at that point, play Boo Unison for four. Boo Unison is gonna send, uh, oh shoot, did I not charge? I think I forgot to charge. Uh, I had a bean in my hand. I would have just charged the bean. So, or this unison was in my hand. I'll charge this unison. Uh, so that would leave me one energy open and I would keep my multicolor open. So Boo comes out. Captain Insano goes to the drop. Plus minus zero on Boo to draw. There's another God Ceiling. Wonderful. And then I would swing leader, draw, untap two energy. Um, and then swing double strike with Boo. And at this point, like if they're not dead, then your deck's probably not gonna beat them, but you still have three beans for defense and you have a God ceiling for a Foo if they decide to play a Foo, there's still negates in hand. Um, obviously, you know, I wasn't pressuring my hand the same way that I would be if somebody was playing against me, I would have had to discard more stuff and deal with things. 
but I hope this gives you guys an idea of how strong this deck can be, how many things you can do with it. And, you know, on the back end, if uh, they're coming in and have a threat and I want to deal with it, I can do something cheeky like combo, Zamasu, double bean, turn two energy back. Um, you know, for the heck of it, let's triple bean. So three beans on there and then I have a rival to play uh, Vegeta Kaba bottom deck something and then pay another three for Kefla bottom deck something ignoring barrier and um, I still have a dimension magic to negate something untap energy and I have another UI for defense 15k power um, so the deck's pretty strong it can do quite a lot of stuff I really like it. It's still in process. There's still stuff to be made. And we can take a look what our last life would have been. The super combo. I never see this guy. He doesn't like me yet. I need to become better friends with him. Um, and then we have another Sand Instincts, another Zeno, another Sand Instincts. There's our arrival hit. Uh, yeah, so I feel like we saw a pretty good amount of the deck. There's not, I guess we actually only saw one super combo. But there's so much good stuff in this, de this deck. There's just so many good cards, so. Uh, it feels good to see them and to play it. I hope you guys like this list. I will post an updated list in a couple weeks once I do some more work on it, but I think this is basically the meat and potatoes of the list. I think there's probably around five to six flex spots where things can move around in terms of ratios. Um, and the list can probably go to 55 or 56 if you add some more unisons. I only have three Captain Insano foils. If I had four, I'd play four. But I feel like the Goku negate tech is fine. If I have energy open and want to grab one from the drop, it also it gives me a negate. It gives me a body on board. The body on board can also be used for arrival purposes later. And uh, I can grab one from the drop because people are going to kill him. Anyway, guys, that's been the SS blue yellow playthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. So my dental tooth tip today would be telling you guys about the tips of your teeth. I've done this once before, but if you missed it, I'm back at it. This is the tip of your tooth. It's also called the incisal edge. Anterior teeth are from canine to canine. These are your incisors and they all have, a, well, your canine is also called your cuspid because it's the first of the teeth with cusps and it only has one cusp. Whereas your premolars have two cusps and your molars have four or sometimes even five cusps. But the tip of your tooth is the incisal edge or the cusp tip. And that's been our dental tooth tip today. I hope you found that extremely informative. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.